everyone, you're watching yet another segment of Conversations. I am at the beautiful Il Ponte at the Hilton and uh, I have with me today two very interesting personalities. In fact, they're brothers. Um, I have on today's segment the Delano Roll brothers. Thank you for being a part of today's segment. Thank you very much for having us, Alanki. Really, really good to be here. Thank you. And something I must say is, um, both of them have contributed so much to the music industry in Sri Lanka with their talent and passion for music. So they're brothers, but something I've noticed is that both of you have two very different personalities. How does this work as a team? Well, uh, yeah, I think we have a very two different personalities. Everybody notices that. But uh, I think it's, it's a fabulous combination for a good team because each one's strengths are different from the other person's weaknesses, for example. So uh, we are able to uh, take off from each other and use the best of our abilities to make a very good team. So I think that that's a very good combination. How long has it been since both of you, I mean, worked as a team? Um, so it's now 10 years. Um, actually, we are now in our 11th year. So we've, we've had, I mean, just touching on exactly what you were saying, we've had uh, friendly arguments, as I would say, uh, but in the best interest of what we do. Uh, I remember once we were having a major discussion uh, at the Heathrow Airport uh, in one of the pubs and we were having a, uh, something to eat and we were having a discussion on, on a concert that we were going to be doing in Sri Lanka. And um, cut a long story short, uh, the discussion was so intense that we forgot to pay the bill. We didn't oh my know. Goodness. And we were walking to the gate when uh, the police actually came behind us. They had thought that actually we had just uh, run, run away by just not willfully paying something. And then he said, no, look, you know, this was the reason. So he went back and paid. But that has been the intensity in which we have actually come so far. Um, it's not easy, you know, to keep something going for 10 years, not between the two of us, but in terms of sponsors, partners, the audience, you know, people like that. So, um, yeah, it's de definitely we are two different personalities for sure, like the North and the South. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they say it never meets, but I think we, we meet somewhere. So, I mean, <laughs> if, if, if you look back 20 years or so, did both of you think that you would be doing what you're doing now or did you just get into the music industry by chance? I would say we never planned these things to happen. Uh, I mean, when Rohan left school, he, we, we joined Singapore Airlines. I went into merchandising and then uh, to hotels. And so, but singing was always something that we always did. I mean, we were singer, we sang in the choir and then we, um, I mean, we, we've been singing. So then this collaboration came, I mean, where we started this. So, and uh, it, it went on very well. I mean, recently I remember my father was making an observation because actually um, some of the Delano Rolls, the earlier generation, they were very much into education and uh, teachers. So we had uh, Kenneth Delanarol, who was a well-known educationist and principal of so many schools, and their sisters were all teachers as well. So he was saying, you know, I never thought my two children will be uh, performers and teachers, because that also we've taken on as another role. So, uh, yeah, but, uh, so we never, we never planned it. We never thought, we never listened, but it just happened to be. I think, you know, we were having this conversation before uh, we started this program about how parents in Sri Lanka actually, you know, they might be aware of the talents that their kids have, but they always want them to pursue their education. I mean, like, do you believe in that? Or do you think, do you think that talent should be given first place? Um, Ishan, will, Ishan will answer one side of this. Um, for me, uh, I really can't understand the fact of parents pushing their children. 
and and pushing in the sense that you know I know there are there are some parents just because they were past cricketers at St Thomas's they want their son also to play cricket right. you know it doesn't happen that way. my son he sings he sings now but at the beginning he didn't want to sing he was not interested so much so that he's he's not in the St Thomas's college choir right now I've, that that has been part and parcel parcel of my life but i never told him you know just because dad sang in the choir you have to sing you know this is otherwise you know you know you're kind of an outlaw you know uh, our entire family has been singing you know in, in choirs and how can you do this that has never been part of my life and i have never done that to my son but it so happened that you know he didn't want to sing and then now he just serves in the sanctuary he's a servant he's an altar boy right and i have absolutely no problem with it you know so that's one side now on another side you then have the other parents especially mothers with all due respect not all mothers but some mothers they just go talking about their son you know social media is 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 taken to a different level today where you know everything that the son does is on social media you know even if he goes to the washroom that's also on social media and <laughs> right? it's crazy really it's crazy you know and because children need to be given their space you know sometimes what 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 parents don't realize is by by talking about their children so much on social media it also creates another side of a issue for the child in school right because because that child is being spoken of so much on social media you know about the, what what he achieved or what she or she achieved you know whether it's a match you know which position he played and the father played in that position before or you know etc i think that's a little bit too much i think children need to be given that space for them to excel and do whatever they feel they are comfortable and they are good at doing and as parents it is our duty to support them in whatever angle they want to go i mean just look at it not so long ago being a chef being a chef was kind of a oh you, you don't do no you got to be a doctor you got to be an engineer chef what is that all about mm-hmm. you know but today children are going into culinary and that kind of area you know and they are well paid that's a skilled job there are so many skilled jobs out there that possibly you and i we never knew that during our school time we didn't know they existed no, we didn't know it existed but today that's a special skill and of course ishan will talk about more of the teaching side yeah so taking out from what rohan said i uh, totally agree and uh, on a uh, area where performing arts is concerned uh, of course the curricula today is i mean it's crazy you know what these children are learning the education system needs a revamp but we can't change the system so we have to go with the system so what i encourage is while they do their education but to do performing arts as a part of relaxation as well but you never know where it might take you and where it might end up so for the people who are only hell bent on only doing performing arts i would like to tell them don't do that i mean just because you want to be a singer of course do do that but also do your studies parallelly because the voice is something very delicate you can have it today and you can lose it tomorrow right so so if you have to have your education to fall back on if anything something like that happens so uh, and but i mean even look at people like ed sheeran ed sheeran was told that he can't sing what by his, by his teacher so and today i don't know if the teacher is alive i don't know what he uh, or she would do so uh, but you know these are the things so uh, encourage the children in what they like to do and uh, performing arts is something that definitely relaxes you especially in today's world of all these stressors um uh, and uh, yeah i think that's a good way to go how's your school doing it's doing very well um so i have about so last year we presented 200 dot children when we did a concert or year before uh so i'm looking forward to doing a concert this year as well 
and uh, but it's uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, Ishan takes. I have to butt in. Ishan takes what I call rejects from other places. You know. Uh, don't get me wrong for teachers out there, but it's a very easy thing to do to teach someone who knows. Absolutely. Who can't do that. Anyone can do that. To teach someone who can sing, you audition and you take children who can sing. It's very easy. But think a minute. If you take someone who can't actually pitch, who cannot sing, that shows the skill of the teacher. Right. And that shows the skill of Ishan. He's not qualified. You know, people will say, oh, the Delano brothers, they are not qualified as teachers. You don't need to be qualified. You just need to have something upstairs and have a little bit of heart and soul to understand the backgrounds of where children come from. You know, most most children today, they for them, singing is a, a relaxation, is, is a is a means of going and just expressing themselves out because they have so many other issues to deal with. And in, in, this, in the midst of this, you have children who cannot sing but who want to sing. Right. They have a love, they have a passion to sing. And why do you want to just shut them off? So thankfully, well, I can't do this, to be very honest, because I don't have that much of patience. And I think most people know that. <laughs> um, uh, but Ishan has loads of patience and he loves teaching children, young kids, kids who are differently able. You know, there are loads of children who come who are differently able, uh, children who cannot pitch. And then he puts all of these people and sometimes you know, I am so nervous because he puts all of these children on stage. And that's the most nervous, nerve wracking moment for a teacher when you know that this child isn't the best, but you're still putting this child on stage. And I can tell you something, and I think most parents who, who've been with The Voice, uh, which is his academy, uh, will, 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 um, will agree to this, that there are children who, who couldn't sing, but who sang for the very first time on stage. And today, those children have excelled. They are, they are, they are totally different. Their outlook towards life is different. They have something which you call, um, what do you call it? Um, Self-confidence. Uh, Self-confidence today. And it's because of an opportunity that someone has given them to get on stage and sing in front of 500 or 700 people. You are actually giving them a voice. Absolutely. Wow, Absolutely. That, is, that is so inspiring. I, I wish you all the best. Thank I, you. I, I hope you continue to inspire many more. Thank you. But Thanks. something, you know, I was doing a lot of research um, <laughs> on the Dylan Road Brothers and then I realized that you guys have never been in a music video. Am I right? Absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> so like, there's this huge music video culture in Sri Lanka right now, where people are of the view that if you want to break into the music industry, you've got to make a music video. And, and what, I mean, sometimes people think, you know, the music video should be controversial. Mm -hmm. And you get a lot of those videos coming out now. Like, what is your view on, on the music so, videos you get out there? Uh, see, the thing is, it depends on the marketing. I mean, it's all about a marketing campaign sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, why people do such controversial things sometimes is to be viewed. So, sometimes, you know, it's like, a, it's like you say, a child, when they need attention, uh, whether it's a good or a bad thing, they do either way they, to get that attention. So, I would put the music videos down to the same thing. But do you think it works? Uh, see, it depends. Now, in some people's cases, like if you look at the masses, so for some people, it, it, it is an attraction. For some people, they look at it and they'll say, oh no, that's terrible. So it depends on how people look at it. Personally, I wouldn't look at it. Uh, I would have my reservations. I would say a, a good music video, a good musician, would be a, a good thing to watch. Um, some uh, see the thing is sometimes uh, it's today is unfortunately a lot of voices are made in the studio. Right. Meaning 
you know there are there are uh, they make songs in the studio and then they the notes it, which you can't hit the computer hits it for you by just the pressing the arrow button it can go up so and then even if you don't have lung capacity to hold a note you press the space bar and it holds that note for you now what happens is i mean as much as this is improvement of technology and people may see it as a good thing when you go to actually perform on stage live live they can't do it because they never could hit that high note and they don't have the lung capacity to so that makes them mime so then you bring in this entire miming culture which personally i think is crazy uh, because then then you know people don't need to come and watch you perform live because they might as well watch you at home on a uh, listen to you on a cd or something like that because the, the if you look at all the past artists who have performed some of them are not in perfect pitch they do look, go off here and there but that's right. the beauty of performing live is that you get something authentic exactly you know you they, they are performing everything live so this is the sad thing that is happening and it's not only in sri lanka it's happening globally but i'm sad that it's happening in sri lanka as well But like, don't you feel that you know, giving so much attention to a music video takes you away from the music itself? Definitely. The thing is, we we never had to go into that role, and and if you look at some of these songs, the if you take the West, those have come out as singles on audio first. Nowadays, it's coming maybe as videos. But if you look at some of the old artists. it came as an audio first and then it became a music video so um, and i thought that was always a, love, a nice progression to have because people first fall in love with the song and then they see a music video which is attached to that song uh, which is not the case now it's first the video you know the video has to come out with the song yeah absolutely i mean i i come across videos on a daily basis where women are being objectified and then you get I mean you get content that even TV stations would not want to air you know mm, that's very sad yeah, that's, that's that's very sad that's something to think about because Correct. i mean there are kids watching Correct. these videos Correct. you sure. know and you Correct. inspire and, and as an artist you inspire you influence people Correct. Yeah. i think that's a very good key point that you stress because see as an artist we are supposed to inspire influence and and uh, put a message through to our audience and uh, we can use it to do something bad we can use it to do something good so we need to look deep into our hearts as artists and see what are we propagate are we doing something good or are we doing something bad it's something for the industry to look at and and give a good message out there so as as musicians like who are the other musicians you draw inspiration from? locally or internationally it could be either well locally i <laughs> some people might laugh um because this has nothing to do with uh, uh the type of music that we do but one of the people that i draw inspiration is from sunil bhair of gypsies oh wow in a huge way um because i i always uh, listen to his uh, videos or his audios and i watch and i learn and i listen um if you notice sunil perra will never sing a song the same way twice never right right if he you sings see, uh, yeah. saima katwela today uh, it is not the way uh, not the same thing that he will sing tomorrow well in the context in in a in a in a in a bracket yes but he will move around you know yeah. he will do different Change things to the tunes variations yeah there are variations to it right so it's never monotonous never boring why has the gypsies uh, uh had so much of success in sri lanka is because of that entertainment that they bring because of the little differences that they make in their songs you know if you sing the same song every day in the same way it becomes boring absolutely right and if you listen to the dilana road brothers again you will see changes that we do with with the tune right 
which actually doesn't help Isha because <laughs> he's the one, yeah, really, he's the one who does the harmony. In most cases, that are ninety percent of the time, he does the harmony. Now I have decided and I have done a few changes, and sometimes he sings the tune and I sing the harmony. But when I make changes to the tune, unrehearsed, oh. spur of the moment, he has to change, and this is not easy. And, and that gets him in trouble. It gets him in trouble, <laughs> but thankfully it does not, thankfully because it does. he's been quick enough to adjust. To adjust. Mm -hmm. But it's important. So I draw a lot of inspiration from from Sunil Perera. I draw a lot of inspiration from watching uh, uh, videos of Elvis Presley. Oh, I love Elvis Presley. I love watching movies of uh, Billy Joel, uh, music, uh, the, the videos. Um, Ingelbert Humperdinck, Tom Jones, nice. who's still going strong, right? You know, he's so so uh, out there with the with the new generation. I think it's amazing what he's done. And then just coming coming back to that same point of the miming business, I believe that, again, don't get me wrong, listeners, but miming to me is cheating. I'm sorry, but it's a cheat because right. people pay money and come to listen to you sing, not mime. That's why people pay and come to listen to you. Right? And I think it's very important that you do that. Tom Jones in Las Vegas, uh, once was running, I think, you know, those days there, I don't know how it is today, but those days it would run sometimes for one month, two months at a stretch. You know, they perform every day, the same show. And one of those shows, or a few of those shows, he was sick. And I know a friend of mine who was in Sri Lanka who was at the concert. And he said, you know, I saw Tom Jones singing, he was sick. He used to sing something, <coughs> cough, back onto the mic and he sings. Wow. Respect for people who do that, for singers who do that. You know, because you're an entertainer. You're supposed to sing. If you cannot sing, you cancel the concert. Okay. Like Celine Dion. You can she canceled, sing. I think, weeks of right. uh, concerts. When Why she had a, uh, I think it was in Las Vegas, if I'm not mistaken, well, when she was on tour, she canceled a few shows because her voice was just gone. So, I mean, as he said, it's a very delicate thing, you know, and to all the young, young boys and girls out there who are going into singing, please, we ask you, don't ruin a voice by singing stuff that you really can't, your voice cannot handle. So that is the advice from Rohan. Um, so, I mean, I think that's, that's great advice because, I mean, you get people trying to do everything sometimes. And it's best to stick to what what you are capable of and what you're good at. Absolutely. Because it, these are organs that are developing, Alan, right. you know, and, and you know, you can't just suddenly go out there and sing something which is so hard on your voice. You, you have to train yourself and progressively get so there. There's a period. So um, that's some great advice. You're also into, um, I mean, so um, for, for those of you who, who didn't know, uh, the two brothers are not just musicians, but they also have their own business going on how is that how is that how do you how do you multitask <laughs> it's not an easy thing uh, he will answer this actually, very uh, well. there's a little bit more than that also so we have a tea company which oh we and run. i forgot you have your school as well school yes. and the tea company and then rohan also conducts uh, international uh, choir competitions oh. and he also trains uh, two international choirs uh, and I trained the cathedral choir in Colombo, so uh, our, our plates are quite full. Uh, but we still find time to do other things as well. So anyway, so coming back to the, uh, uh, the tea company. So uh, this is where my father is, of course, the chairman and the two of us uh, work at the company. And uh, it's a value-added tea company. We, um, and also recently my father did a uh, discovery or rather invention to make the current tea bag machines which work with staples to make it staple less so which is uh, again a big breakthrough in the whole tea bagging industry so it's that has also added on to our work uh, with patents and studying law and you know to do all these things so um, yeah so the, the so we we do this tea packaging company and it's been going very well 
I think the high note we hit was in 2012 when we supplied the tea for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee celebration. So, oh my! Yes. Yeah. That's fancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite, quite fancy. Um, so yeah, um, that's that's a very, very important project actually that we are doing because actually that's taking so much of our time today, uh, these days, and I think it's important that we actually give that time because for one, it's it's something which our father has done, uh, which no other no other engineer around the world. They've been all trying it. Right. Um, secondly, it's it's uh, it's a breakthrough in the industry, and it gives longevity for small and medium enterprises who who work with uh, who are packing on a on a machine called the Constanta machine. You know, it's a German machine, um, manufactured in the years of 1940s, 1940s. possibly. Uh, and you know, these machines are very old. You know, and uh, it was. We were coming to a situation where these machines were going to be thrown, right? For basically scrap iron, because people are spending about 400,000, 500,000 euro and going for newer machines without the staple, without the staple. But then what happens to the small and medium enterprises that already have these machines, which are going to be redundant because the world is asking for stapleless bags. So that's when dad thought we must do something. And then he started doing this invention, which took him five years. And now we have a unit that he has designed, now tried, and now we are operating. And bought by a few, international, bought by a few international companies already. In all that we do, I mean, everything that we do, it gives us a lot, loads of satisfaction. Good luck with everything, everything that you have going on. But um, lastly, what, what future plans? Uh, well, there are some plans. Uh, so we'll be having a few more concerts this year, but it with the whole concepts that we've been doing for the last 10 years are changing. So, um, so there'll be new concerts that will be announced, which are kind of different to what we have been doing in the, uh, for the last 10 years. Um, yeah, and uh, we have few international performances also coming up. So we're looking forward to all of these. Right, that's interesting. So we've had a very interesting conversation. I had a nice time with with the brothers. Um, I learned so much, and I'm sure like all of you aspiring musicians musicians out there would have learned so much as well. Um, well, we are not done yet. We have now come to the end of the first segment. Right. Okay. But we will you you both of you would actually face a round of rapid fire questions. Okay. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I would say, help me make it through the night. Love that song. Going by what I have been reading and seeing, I think it's Iraj. Favorite international musician, I would, a singer. Right? Singer. Yeah, yeah. I would go with Andrea Bocelli. Sunil Pere. Celine Dion. Teaching. As I said before, as a singer, be very careful with what kind of songs you choose, depending on your age and what your voice can take. The prayer. Backstreet Boys. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, there are quite a few things, so it's difficult to answer in one go. That's okay. Uh, no, I'm just joking. But of course, uh, going on, uh, traveling with him on the plane, because he, he'll, just when I'm falling asleep, he'll just do and wake me up. Oh my gosh, that's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he'll say Soda annoying. bottle. <laughs> Very sad. Hmm. I would change the Nazi era. I would also say to, you know, just make sure you exercise your voice and uh, uh, do what you can do with your voice and progress slowly and not very fast. Nothing is instant noodles. 
So we have come to the end of another interesting conversation with the two brothers. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of today's segment. Thank you very much, Alan, for having both of us. It was indeed a lovely conversation. Thank you very much for having us. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. So I will be back with another interesting personality uh, for the next segment. So until then, take care and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.